Hello, and welcome to our webcast. Today's topic will be water systems and fan coil units. My name is Sean White, and I'll be presenting today's program. Besides going through the explanation of water systems and what is a fan coil, this training session provides a general system overview on how the fan coil functions as part of the total water system. An overview of the various fan coils available in the market including typical applications and a discussion of their control and valve packages. This system is based on the distribution of hot or cold water to individual heat transfer devices, fan coils, located in each room of the building. When cooling is required in the conditioned air space, then cold water is circulated between the conditioned space and the plant, while hot water is circulated through the distribution system when heating is required. Why use water? Water has 3200 times the heat capacity of air. This is due to the higher density of water versus air allowing a much higher heat capacity. Higher heat capacities allow for more and efficient transfer of energy to the occupied space from the cooling or heating liquid. The water either releases its energy through the coil to the air as in the case of the unit being in the heating mode or absorbs heat from the occupied space when in the cooling mode. Equivalent energy. A 1 inch water pipe can transfer the same amount of energy as an 18 inch by 18 inch air duct. The 1 inch pipe will require less space and less material to install leading to lower costs. Part of designing the HVAC system for any project is the equipment and installation costs. These cost requirements ultimately guide the designing and building of the project. Components. The major components of an all water system are the chiller, boiler, fan coil units, and of course the piping to tie it all together. The chiller will typically run at 45 degrees Fahrenheit while the boiler typically operates at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. The piping throughout the building is sized to handle the GPM requirements of the fan coil units. Typical GPM is approximately 4 for the cold water and 2 for the hot water coil in the fan coil unit. However, this can vary wildly due to unit size, heating, and cooling loads in the occupied space. I'd like to touch on briefly air water systems. In an air water system both air and water are used for providing required conditions in the conditioned space. The air and water are cooled or heated in a central plant. The air supplied to the conditioned space from the central plant is called as primary air, while the water supplied from the plant is called as secondary water. The complete system consists of a central plant for cooling or heating of water and air, ducting system with fans for conveying air, water pipelines and pumps for conveying water, and a room cooling heating unit. The room terminal may be in the form of a fan coil unit, an induction unit, or a radiation panel. Air water systems can serve multi zones or single zones. Air water systems use the beneficial features from both all air and all water systems. The latent energy, primarily from outside air, is removed in a dedicated air handling unit, which distributes conditioned air for ventilation and pressurization to the indoor space. The sensible energy from the indoor space is carried in the water which reduces space requirements throughout the building. The air handler. For summer air conditioning, the primary air is cooled and dehumidified in the central plant so that it can offset the entire building latent load. Since the major source of humidity is the ventilation air, the primary air handler cools and removes the moisture from the outdoor air and distributes the dried ventilation air indoors. Pressurization is an important aspect to control moisture 
infiltration into the building envelope. Chilled water is supplied to the conditioned space to partly offset the building's sensible load only. Since the chilled water coil kept in the conditioned space has to take care of only sensible load, condensation of the room air inside the conditioned space is avoided thereby avoiding the problems of condensate drainage and related problems in the conditioned space. As mentioned, the primary takes care of the ventilation requirements of the conditioned space Hence, unlike in all water systems, there is no need for separate ventilation systems. In winter, moisture can be added to the primary air in the central plant and hot water is circulated through the coil kept in the conditioned space. Now back to all water systems. Fan coils have the capability of providing sensible and latent cooling as well as heating a room or a zone. The term fan coil unit will mean different things to users, specifiers, and installers in different countries and regions, particularly in relation to product size and output capability. Most of the time, it is referred to as the fan coil when it uses water to provide the heat transfer, but also it can be referred to as a small thermal unit. A two-pipe system is used for either cooling only or heating only applications, but cannot be used for simultaneous cooling and heating. A two-pipe system consists of two insulated pipes, one for supply of cold hot water to the conditioned space and the other for the return water. A cooling or heating coil provides the required cold or hot water. As the supply water flows through the conditioned space, Required heat transfer between the water and conditioned space takes place, and the return water flows back to the cooling or heating coil. A flow control valve controls the flow rate of hot or cold water to the conditioned space and thereby meets the required building heating and cooling load. The flow control valve is controlled by the zone thermostat. Depending on the season, Either of cold water or hot water can be isolated with simple changeover. Problems can occur during the mid-seasons where cooling may be required part of the time and heating part of the time, and no cooling or heating the balance of the time. Two-pipe systems without water changeover circulate chilled water only, and when heat is needed, it is usually provided by an electric strip heater at the fan coils. In some cases, hot water is circulated during the coldest part of the heating season to reduce the operating cost. The supply air quantity is fixed and the supply air temperature control is achieved by varying the water supply through the water coil. When the thermostat sensor demands more cooling, a two or three way valve located on the line is in the full open position. Note that the water flow rate required for heating is much lower than the chilled water flow. The piping and pumps are sized for the maximum flow of chilled water. Using the same piping system results in very low velocities during heating. To overcome this, if not all, 50% of pumps may need to be operative. Energy is wasted in terms of pumping costs. It is better to use a four pipe system and lower flow rates with smaller pumps. The advantage of a two pipe system is that it has half the piping of a four pipe system and therefore a lower cost in copper piping. However, some disadvantages are that the unit can only heat or cool but not both simultaneously. If parts of the building need heating while other parts need cooling, this can be a problem for two-pipe systems. Three-pipe systems. Three-pipe systems have separate chilled and hot water supplies, but a common return. These systems are rarely used because they consume more energy because of the excessive mixing of the chilled and hot water in the common return pipe. Four-pipe systems. A four-pipe system consists of two supply pipelines, 
one for cold water and one for hot water, and two return water pipelines. The cold and hot water are used in a required proportion depending upon the zone load, and the water is supplied to the conditioned space. The return water is split into two pipes. One stream flows from the hot water coil and the other flows from the cooling coil. The system is further categorized as an independent load. Independent load systems have two separate water coils, one served by hot water and the other by cold water. These systems make use of a two-way on-off valve. Four-pipe system. The advantages of a four-pipe system are all-year availability of heating and cooling with individual zone temperature control. Chilled and hot water can be simultaneously supplied during the spring and fall seasons. Simpler changeover decisions, more flexible and adaptable to widely varying loads. Disadvantages of four-pipe systems. Four-pipe systems have a high first cost in addition to the need for either two coils or more costly control valves at each terminal unit or fan coil. The systems also have a high operating cost because of the two-pump operation. They do, however, provide good flexibility in meeting varying loads. Fundamentally, the function of the chilled water system is to transport the cooling fluid from the chillers to the load fan coils and back to the chillers. Assuming that the distribution system is adequately sized, we will concentrate on the hydronic interaction between the low terminal units and the chillers. For sake of simplicity, each coil is representing a fan coil unit. In this system, the constant flow pumps are delivering chilled water to each of the two pipe fan coils. The fan coils are called two pipe because you have just two pipes going to them, one for the supply water and another one for the return water that goes back to the chiller. A constant volume system would require three-way type control valves to allow the water flow through the coil or bypassing the water coil to provide a constant water flow through the system. Two pipe fan coils where the same fan coil is used for cooling or for heating by changing the system to heating and back to cooling is called a changeover system. Typically the change to heating occurs sometime in the fall and will vary by region. For the spring and fall period where you may find the need to do both cooling and heating based on the zone or based on time of day, supplemental electric heating will reduce the guessing of when to change the hydronic system to heating. In constant volume water flow systems, when the water flows through the coil, there is a certain amount of resistance or pressure drop that the pumps must circumvent. However, when the valves allow the water to bypass the coil, resistance will be less causing the system to become imbalanced. Therefore, a balancing valve is installed in the bypass to maintain constant pressure drop as the water flow is modulated around the coil. This type of constant flow system with a three-way control valve is very simple from a control and layout perspective, but the pumps will continuously run at full power even during part load conditions. However, when you try to use the two-way control valve with constant flow, you will have system problems. Once the zone temperatures are satisfied on some or most of the zones, the two-way control valves will close to stop the cold or hot water from flowing through the fan coils. However, the pump will continue trying to push the constant water at full power to all the fan coils. Any fan coil units with open valves will receive the extra flow. The entire system pressure changes and the system will be unbalanced. For the chiller, the water flow balance is very critical for proper operation. Two-way valves are used in variable flow systems. As each two-way valve adjusts the flow of chilled water through the coil to satisfy the existing load, the secondary or distribution pump responds by regulating the amount of chilled water delivered. Water flows through the bypass in either direction as needed in order to balance the system. You may have heard of these systems called a variable primary flow, VPF, system or as a decoupled system. Now let's take a look at four pipe systems. 
The four pipe system includes a distribution system that contains both hot water supply and return lines as well as chilled water supply and return lines. It is obvious that the fan coil unit will be required to have two coils and for that reason they are called four pipe fan coils. A four pipe fan coil technically could be heating one minute or cooling the next. The control valve and the thermostat set point will be deciding when to cool and when to heat. The clear advantage of a four pipe system is each zone or fan coil can be in the heating or cooling as required, independently of the requirements of neighboring zones or units. We will talk a bit about controls later in the training module. Fan coil components. The basic components that make up a fan coil unit are a fin tube coil, one, which is the heat exchanger, the motor blower section, two and four, and the filter, item three. Fan coils can have one coil with multiple rows, which can be used just for heating or both heating and cooling. Heating only fan coils are also called cabinet unit heaters. Fan coils used for heating and cooling may have one or two coils. Fan coils with two coils are set up to allow one of the coils to be used for cooling only and the second one strictly for heating. Units with one coil will require alternating cold or hot water depending on the time of year. The motor blower helps increase the heat transfer by forcing convection across the coil and to force conditioned air, item 9, into the room space. The room temperature is controlled either by a unit mounted or wall mounted remote thermostat which may include a manual on off switch and speed control six, which will allow the speed of the fan motor to be reduced or increased as needed. The water flow through the coil can also be reduced or increased by monitoring the control valves item 10. Many of the designers will choose a fan coil unit to meet the load requirement while running at medium speed. Any fan coil equipped with a cooling coil should have a drain pan, item 5, installed below the coil to capture the condensation. Depending on the type of fan coil, you may have the main drain pan extended out to capture the pipe condensation within the valve and piping packages, item 10, or it could be a separate auxiliary drain pan. A well-designed fan coil unit will have lower water pressure through the coil as well as an efficient fan and motor assembly for quiet operation and low energy consumption. One thing that is peculiar in the HVAC industry is how to define the handing of the fan coil or how you go about determining the location of the piping connections. With most manufacturers, the cooling coil piping connections defines if the unit is right or left handed as the person looks to the front of the unit. Discharge air hits the face. In this graphic, the cooling coil being represented in blue, the piping connections are to the left. Therefore, the fan coil is considered a left hand unit. At this time, I would also like to point out that the heating coil in red is shown to be located in front of the cooling coil or in the reheat location. The heating coil on a fan coil can be installed in the preheat or reheat position. In colder climates, the heating coil tends to be located in the preheat position to reduce the possibility of freezing when fresh air is required. Now let's focus on the way a fan coil controls the comfort in a room and also let's cover the different types of control valves that you will find with fan coils. When the room load is satisfied or the zone room temperature becomes comfortable, one of the ways to control the room temperature is to stop the water from flowing into the coil. In a three-way valve, the water will stop going to the coil and will be redirected to the bypass line and back to the chiller. The most cost-effective valves are the two-position valves, which are also called on-off valves. Typically, they are spring return to allow the valves to return to the normal position when power is removed. On a normally closed valve, when electrical power is applied, it will fully open. When power is removed or de-energized, the loaded spring actuator will make the valve return to the closed position. On a normally open valve, when power is applied, it will close. The spring return, which is part of the actuator, should have enough strength to overcome the working and system water pressure. 
Depending on the manufacturer, the capability of this actuator will vary. Typically, a standard valve rating used in fan coils is capable of handling between 27 psi to 50 psi. In very few instances, Belimo valves, which have a higher industrial rating, have been used in fan coils. Industrial high-end valve usage in fan coils is not that common. The simplest way and most basic control system would be a thermostat that is directly connected to the fan and valve actuator. When the thermostat detects the room temperature is within a degree from the set point on the thermostat, it will cut power to the normally closed valve. The valve will not open until the thermostat detects that the room temperature is a degree or so above the set point. Using on-off valves and simple thermostats, the room temperature will tend to isolate below and above the set point and could become a bit uncomfortable and this is one of the reasons modulating valves are used. Modulating valves are capable of varying the water flow in small increments from fully closed to 100% flow. There are two types of modulating control valves. The three wire floating actuator, as the name implies, has three wires. One is for the neutral, one is used to power the valve towards the open position, and the other one to power the valve towards the closed position. The amount of time you leave the power on determines how much of the valve moves to the closed or open position. If the valve takes 8 seconds to go from fully closed to fully open, and the thermostat is calling to open 50%, it will power the valve for 4 seconds if the valve was fully closed. The 0 to 10 volt DC proportional valve will either be fully closed or normally closed valves at 0 volts and fully open at 10 volts. With a proportional actuator, you can determine fairly accurately the position of the valve. At 2.5 volts, the normally closed valve will be 25% open. Two position valve actuators can be powered with 24 volts or line voltage. Line voltage actuators could be 115, 208, 230, or 277 volt. Modulating valves always require 24 volts. It is important to mention that thermostats or their controls have to be designed in the same way. On-off thermostats with on-off valves and modulating thermostats with modulating valves. A two-way modulating valve is similar to the three-way valve in that the water flow through the coil is modulated proportionately to the load. As mentioned in previous slides, the primary difference is that the two-way valve does not bypass any unused water. It simply throttles the amount of water passing through the coil. The coil and the air being conditioned experience no difference in the cooling effect of using a two-way versus a three-way valve. The chilled water system, however, sees a great difference. Recall that with a three-way valve, the terminal water flow, water through the coil plus water bypassing the coil, is constant at all loads. With a two-way valve, the terminal water flow varies proportionally with the load because there is no mixing of the coil and bypassed water. The temperature of the water leaving the load terminal remains relatively constant at all conditions. In fact, the return water temperature may actually rise slightly as the load decreases due to the coil heat transfer characteristics. One more item to cover. In one of my previous slides I mentioned that two pipe fan coils where the same fan coil is used for cooling and heating is called a changeover system. Generally a thermostat controlling a fan coil with valves will require some type of sensor or aquastat to be strapped on the inlet piping of the fan coil to sense if the water in the system is in the heating or cooling mode. A basic thermostat uses the aquastat, which is a simple thermostat. If the inlet water temperature is above 83 degrees Fahrenheit, the aquastat will connect the heating signal from the thermostat to heat the space. When the temperature of the inlet water drops below 65 degrees Fahrenheit, the aquastat shall allow the cooling signal to be connected to the control valve to cool the space. A digital thermostat generally has a sensor, typically with the 10K resistance, which will change the resistance depending on the temperature in the pipe. Here we have the typical non-industrial fan coil unit used in water systems. Above the doorway is a concealed horizontal unit. Above the chair is the same horizontal unit but with a casing around it for exposed applications. Behind the chair is an in-wall vertical stack unit. 
Underneath the window is a floor mounted vertical basic unit with a casing for exposed applications. And the picture next to it in the bottom right hand corner is a vertical floor mounted unit that has been recessed into the wall for concealed applications. In this slide we show the same type of fan coil unit minus the vertical stack unit but for industrial uses. Typically in these installations higher CFMs and external static pressure levels are required and therefore a stronger unit with larger motors and blowers are needed versus the non-industrial units on the previous slide. We would like to go deeper into the vertical stack fan coil unit used in water systems as it is the most commonly used fan coil unit for large high-rise projects. Projects like these can easily have several hundred and in some cases several thousand units. The unit is set against one or two walls and is covered in sheetrock to match the room's paint or wallpaper scheme. Only the supply grill, return grill, and thermostat are exposed to the occupied space. The vertical stack unit can come as a standalone unit with its own external riser piping or in pairs sharing piping. The most efficient and cost effective installation is when two units are paired together so they share a common set of plumbing riser pipes. Two units function independent of each other and therefore can supply heating and cooling to two different zones. In the case of apartments, these zones can be either in one apartment or the two zones can actually be in two separate apartments with two separate tenants. On the left we can see a side view cutaway of a vertical stack unit. Air is drawn in through the front return grill, shown in red, cooled when in the cooling mode of course, through the white water coil, drawn up through the blower and supplied out the top front grill of the unit. An important item to note on this slide is that the riser pipe shown mounted on the back of the unit. As mentioned earlier, all of the fan coil units must be connected to the building's boilers and chillers through the building's plumbing. An advantage of the vertical stack unit is that it comes with its own water plumbing pipes to connect through the building to the boilers and chillers. Installation costs at the project site can be lowered by using this type of unit as the fan coil unit comes pre-plumbed with the necessary project piping. In riser piping layouts, the water is typically supplied returned from either the roof or the basement. In this schematic, we show a basement serviced riser piping column for a single stack of units and for a master drone stack of units. Most of the units in the stack use two-way valves with the final unit utilizing a three-way valve. In order to ensure that all units receive the proper number of gallons per minute, water GPM flow regulator valves should be utilized at each unit. This will prevent units near the basement and pumps from receiving too much water and the top floor units not receiving enough water. Here are three typical installations for vertical stack units. As mentioned previously, the master drone installation is the most cost effective due to the use of one riser piping set supplying two fan coil units. Between A, B, and C, B is the most cost effective as the two riser pipe sets can service four units. In A and C, two riser piping sets can service only two units. To summarize the vertical stack fan coil advantages, they have a small footprint, they can have multiple supply grills for multiple rooms, standalone or master drone configurations for multiple rooms or tenants, and they are supplied with their own riser piping. Some items to consider when selecting a thermostat to control the fan coil unit. Will the fan be in a cycling mode? meaning that the fan is off when the room load set point is met. This is typically used in residential or condominium applications. Or will the fan be continuous, where the fan is on all the time? This is mostly used in commercial applications. It's recommended on unit mounted controls. By having the fan on all the time, even when there's not a call for cooling or heating, air through the occupied space is circulated and the, temp the thermostat can get an accurate reading of the room temperature. Although continuous, 
Fan speed ramping provides energy savings with the fan and valve control to condition the space. This slide shows the operation of normally open and normally closed on-off valves. Depending on whether the valve is normally open or normally closed, the thermostat will either remove or add power to operate the valve. On-off valves are either 0% open or 100% open. There is no middle ground. Going from full closed to full open is drastic and can cause large temperature swings around the thermostat's set point for the room. A more moderate and energy efficient approach is to use modulating thermostats with modulating control valves. Modulating valves can be at any point between 0 and 100% open depending on the load demand called by the thermostat. If the fan coil unit is turned on and the temperature in the room is far from the thermostat set point, the modulating valve will be at full 100% open. As the temperature of the room comes closer to the set point, the thermostat will start to slowly close the valve until the set point is reached. Once the set point is reached, the valve will be fully closed. If the temperature of the room starts to drift from the set point, the thermostat will open the valve only just enough to bring the room temperature back to the set point. This minimizes the use of hot and cold water through the fan coil unit and makes the boiler and chiller more energy efficient. Another type of thermostat control are building management systems. In large project installations where individual fan coil unit control is not required or where occupants should be prevented from adjusting the fan coil settings, a BMS system can be used. A set of computers in a control room remote from the fan coil unit controls the valve positions and fan speeds to maintain the set point in each space. This system is used often in schools and office buildings. This type of system is rarely used in hotels and dormitories where individual occupant controlled fan coil units are required. Valve packages control and regulate the flow of water through the unit. Shown here is a complete two-way valve package used by any water system heating and or cooling unit. Starting with the supply pipe, there is a shutoff valve so water can be isolated from the unit for maintenance or repair. Shutoff valves are almost always required. Next moving toward the coil is a union for easy disassembly of the unit from the building's plumbing. Next is a PT plug for measuring water pressure and temperature. A Y strainer is shown next for removing particulates from the water stream. This is important as these particulates can clog the coil and other valves. The motorized control valve is next, which is controlled by the thermostat to allow water to flow or not flow through the coil. And finally, there's another union before the coil. The return line has similar valves minus the wire strainer and control valve. It does contain the flow control valve that limits the total GPM allowed through the unit. This prevents one fan coil unit from drawing too much water and starving other units in the HVAC water system. Advantages of water systems. Water is an effective heat transfer medium. Therefore, distribution pipes generally are a relatively small volume compared to air ducts. Recirculation of air is unnecessary, so commingling of odors and contaminants or concerns over fire and smoke spreading from one zone to the other are minimized. First cost is often less than for other central systems. Less building space is required. More suitable for retrofit applications. Off-hour conditioning does not require central air system operation. Cooling can be easily shut off in unoccupied areas where it's not needed. Quieter than unitary systems minimal space needed for air handling rooms and duct clearances, individual zone temperature control, variable speed secondary pumps can be used to improve comfort control and reduce operating costs. Can use heat recovery techniques, flexible and readily adaptable to many building module requirements, 
provides individual room control, prevents cross-contamination of recirculated air from one room to another. Disadvantages of water systems. All water system is limited by its inability to control relative humidity, outdoor air content, air composition, and pressure. A separate ventilation system is required for air quality reasons. No positive ventilation is provided unless wall openings are used. Ventilation is usually from a wall aperture and is not easily controlled due to the wind and stack effect. Otherwise, it is often accomplished by the opening of windows. Unless dehumidification and latent load is handled with a separate system, such as an air water system, a condensate drain pan system is required and terminal air filters must be periodically cleaned. Relative humidity may be high in the summer, particularly if chilled water flow is modulated for temperature control. No humidification is provided. Seasonal changeover is required. Maintenance and service work must be performed in the occupied area. And finally, the filters associated with terminal units are the low efficiency type and require frequent changes because of static pressure limitations. That concludes our program today. We thank you for spending this time with us and hope that this material will benefit you in your professional endeavors. We will continue to produce more programs covering other HVAC topics and hope that you will join us. Our panel will now begin answering questions that came in during the program. If you have any questions, please enter them into the box on the right side of your screen. Thank you.